Now, we were stating before our unexpected uh, interruption, the last um, recording that we were doing, we were on the continuing unfoldment of certain prophetical signs in the present time, and namely connected with the Feast of Trumpets, what's known in the Hebrew, from the Hebrew perspective, as the Feast of Trumpets. And we're speaking about what September is significant. September is a significant month besides the so-called 9-11. Before the 9-11, September 11th was and is and will be Ethiopia's New Year. And we were teaching previously the connection between the Ethiopian New Year and um, the Feast of Trumpets was one of the teachings that we teach now. The solar, the moon and the solar is, a, is, a, is an aspect of it that one needs to, to understand the difference and the, the relativity of the moon and the solar. But this particular September, what we're seeing is the creation or the beginning level of the creation of a Palestinian State. Now, the Torah reading for this particular period concerns, namely uh, Ki Tavo and uh, Nitzabim, it concerns the Palestinian covenant of the Beit Israel, of our ancestors, our biblical ancestors, we as the once lost but now found black sheep of the house of Israel, but also the European Jews and other Jews, they understand it in the same context. So we see this overlapping of the biblical you understand with the so-called temporal or the spiritual elements with the seclorum and the worldly elements. Now, the creation of a Palestinian state with uh, East Jerusalem as its capital is Daniel 9 and 27. What we're seeing is a biblical reference to Daniel 9 and 27. Now, what we have circulating up there in the heavens, now one of the signs that even Luke's gospel and the other gospel point that there should be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And, and with uh, great stress and distress among nations with perplexity. The 22nd, the stock market, they, they said, really fell worse than, than it has been in, they say, 52 weeks. And we, we've been, we're in heading to the Feast of Trumpets will be 52 weeks. They also are stating that the, the situation is as bad as World War II because they are still unexplained and undealt with revelations, and mainly concerning the king of kings of Ethiopia, which is a, a, for, a foretelling of that day coming, you understand, and the Lord coming proverbially as a thief in the night. But now, what we have circulating up there, as we point out right here, is Elian or E. Lenin and mommy of the Irene kind of storm, the L and the R being interchangeable. The Eileen, which is this Eileen or Elenin, rather, is a comet planet. Some say it's Nibiru or it's a star. The same Elenin comet occurred or came into its closest proximity with Earth around March 11, 2011. It had a, a sort of an alignment, some say. The tsunami occurred in Japan coupled with the earthquake. We've been having some very, very strange, um, unexpected earthquakes. They say that those out in uh, Virginia or West Virginia or whatever still have not recovered. It's much worse, they're saying, than what we formerly were told. And this is having now an effect on the so-called global or the seclorum, the world order economy. The European Union is still fumbling around, so forth and so on. And even Ahmed uh, Anita Jad, Anita Jad, Anita Jad, I always say Ahmed Anita Jacket, but anyway, Ahmed Anita Jad, even he was at the UN and the US and the French and others walked out on him, and he was saying that look at your global system. So we know that Iran or, or Iran is the end of the matrix, which is Persia, which is, which is Mena Mena Tekel Ufaris, and you've been weighed, measured, you've been weighed and measured and found wanting. That's that old biblical from, from um, Daniel. That's it found in Daniel too, the, the weighing, the measuring, and found lacking, and found lacking. Now, Faris, Ufaris, and links with Persia, and Persia is Iran, and Iran, we know, has been in the news. 
you know what I'm saying? And most of those in the West have been told to hate on Iran, but it's only the Iranians who are even mentioning and have even made mention of our struggle as the once lost but now found base is around the so-called black people in the West when they've mentioned even the slave trade, you know what I'm saying? And the whole global economy cannot recover because it has not yet, it has not yet owned up, you know what I'm saying, to the slave trade. You see, instead now we have a global enslavement of the world and peoples and so forth and so on. But the reason why the Western economy cannot recover, you understand, that's England and the U.S. and now, now um, what they call it, uh, Europe, the European Union is being adversely affected. Because what do these people do? They're trying to hold on to their slave profits and their slave wealth and they have not dealt with reparation or reimbursement to, to the poor and the suffering. And, of course, black folks are still suffering and suffering even worse than anybody else. And no one is speaking about it besides a few. We give Tavis, uh, Smiley, and Cornel West, and, and some of them, some kudos that they're at least putting this issue and say, what's up, Obama? But Obama already laid his card down, and now what we're seeing is this creation of a Palestinian state with his capital, East Jerusalem, as his capital. Now there's a planet, a star, that's moving in this direction and has already passed through this area, close to this area, March 11th, tsunami, earthquake, you understand? And it possibly has four to eight planets or moons with comets and asteroids in it. Now, many look at this as being synonymous and linked with the rapture of Yeshua's bride, which is the church. At that point that they call in the seven festivals, um, Yom Teruah, or the Feast of Trumpets. Now, let us look at three points, three points, and let us see what we have. Let's look at three points. One, the creation of a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital, Daniel 9, 27. There's a bunch of articles out there, whether you can look at the L.A. Times, you can look at the Haaret, um, you could, um, there's some other ones have information out there. Just Google it if you want to find any more. Now, there's a Torah violation. There's a Torah violation. See, the state of Israel is in a Torah violation, and therefore there's a coming judgment. There's a Torah violation in the coming judgment. There are donor countries, so-called donor countries. They meet in Brussels up there in Central Europe. They recognize on April 13th, yes, April 13th, 2011, that the so-called PA or the Palestinian Authority is above the threshold of a functioning state. So they say that they are already a functioning state. Don't forget Obama in his perfect flip mode, remember we did the Jeremiah right, so here he's doing this to the Palestinians. He basically said, listen, why you're coming here to the U.N.? The U.N. can't give you a state, but wait. Didn't the U.N. give um, 1948 the state of Israel a state? It, it wasn't God doing it, but they would like to tell you it was God doing it. This was a man-made. But still, in that man-making of it, there's a prophetic unfoldment because let every man be a liar, and our God and Father, and the God and Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let him be true. Now, an assessment immediately here, this assessment of the so-called donor countries in Brussels concerning the PA authority, Palestinian authority, it immediately hailed and was hailed as, guess what, a birth certificate. Remember, we don't have the baby yet, but they're giving a birth certificate before the baby even is coming about. You understand? Know For the so-called Palestinian state. Now, whether the Palestinians are in the right or wrong or so forth, we're not getting into those sort of issues because there's enough ones out there opining on it. What we're looking at is the prophecies, the big picture. Is the big big picture? Israel is going to make a peace deal. It has to make a peace deal. It's at a certain point where many of them recognize they don't want to, but in order to continue doing what they're doing. You understand, and try to avert what they fear might happen, they're going to make a peace deal. You understand, and scripturally, that's with Christos the Kawami, you understand, or with the Antichrist for seven years. Seven years. Remember, we were talking about um, the, the, the Shavua Hupa, which is the, 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 the bridal, how do you say, the, 
the bridal honeymoon, the seven-day honeymoon week, which also links to these prophetic seven years that we have in the book of Revelation. You won't be able to comprehend anything in Revelation in its proper context unless you look at the, the Old Testament. As Christ said, you do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. So if you don't know the Old Testament, it's going to be very hard to really put into proper context these signs and symbols and so forth and so on. They're all within a Judaic, a Judo, Judeo-Christian or really a Hebraic concept. You understand? Now, Israel, as we mentioned, is going to make a peace deal with the so-called Antichrist, the Christos, the Kawami, for Sabbat Amet or Ametat, seven years. That seven-year period is that period of the Shavuah, some say the rapture, Shavuah, Hupa, you understand, the rapture or the bridal, the so-called bridal chamber, of which the prophet Isaiah, Yeshayahu, Nabi, um, Esaias, has something interesting to say about this that we'd like to share with you. Now, Isaiah says that your covenant with death, some interpret this to be the covenant with death, the covenant with death will be annulled annulled. It's like a, a, a contract, a covenant, almost like a marriage. It sounds like a marriage, right? Your covenant with moat, with death, will be annulled. We're living in an age of all the skull and bones and everything else. You know what I'm saying? We're living in an age which humanity has made a covenant with death. Imagine, people will wear the death and the tombstone sign 